Hi guys, I'm going to be spamming you tonight. Uh, this is the third video. This is a video response to Mr. Dylan's uh, 200 sub uh, contest. Uh, congratulations for that. Good thumbs up. Way to go. And um, yeah, he has some really good uh, questions there. I wanted to respond. So, question number one uh, Do you think drugs make music? I think that drugs don't make music, but they certainly influence that influence music. I mean, you know, Jimi Hendrix would, would he play the way that he played, you know, if, uh, if it wasn't for drugs. I don't know. It might be, might not be. I mean, and I think that, you know, it's certain types of people that actually have this tendency to use drugs because of their personality, because of how they are. So it doesn't mean that makes them better musicians. It certainly drives them to some kind of uh, way of seeing things, some different, a different way of seeing things, but certainly doesn't make music. So yeah, if you don't have it, basically you cannot, you can, you can't do anything about it. So yeah, that's that's my answer to it. I hope it's good. Anyway, uh, one album which you think is perfect for the road and why? Well, uh, for the road, it depends on what what you mean for the road. For me, on the road means driving my own car. And usually when you drive your own car, unless it's electric, there's a lot of noise. Uh, a lot of noise from the engine, a lot of noise from the wind, whatever have you. So I've tried listening to a lot of stuff. And anything that has electric guitars, uh, you just you cannot listen to it properly. You, you miss a lot of the music. And usually you can hear it because you know it, if that makes sense. So you cannot really enjoy it. And if somebody's with you that doesn't know that the album will never be able to, or music will not be able to understand it or enjoy it as much. So I've, and that's part of the reason why on radio you listen to a lot of silly pop music that's really clean uh, sounding and yeah, it's because a lot of people listen to it on the cars, they, they choose music that people can actually enjoy in their cars. There's one album though. Uh, that I think that is really good for the road because it gives you has a lot of energy so you don't fall asleep it's good musically and um, it's uh, generally it's quite good and um, you know uh, it's uh, one of the albums that you wouldn't expect me to have but I do have it it's uh, gossip uh, music for men uh, disco disco punk music not punk Disco rock, it's like uh, something that Blondie would have done, you know, if they were younger and living now, I guess. So yeah, this is a really, really good one. Really clean sounding, um, and it just gives you the kind of uh, rhythm, if you want, to go on, you know, driving, which is really cool. So yeah, that's that's why I think it's really cool for. Uh, on the road, anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, what was the first song that ever made you cry? What was the situation? I've never cried for uh, with a song. I, I never, no song has made me cry, to be honest. But there is one song that is send shivers down my spine, and that is "Lullaby" from Low. Do check it out on YouTube. There are two versions of. Lullaby. There's one version that came out on an album, I think, and there's one demo version, which is 10 minutes long, and it's unbelievable. And I'm talking about that one. It's just haunting. It's chilling. It's it's devastating. It's unbelievable. And you have to listen to it to understand it. And if you can, find it on a good quality. Uh, you, so you can actually listen to what's going on because there is, it's, it's a lo-fi recording and there's a lot of um, uh, nuances uh, in the music and it's just, just so amazing. Uh, do check it out, it's un unbelievable. So sorry about that, but it's a really good song, do check it out. And uh, finally, uh, one cover song that you really enjoy and one cover song that you really dislike. So. I will tell you one uh, one one cover song that I really really enjoy is um, 
what's the name of that song? The Ghost of Tom Joad. Now that was originally a Bruce Springsteen song and it was like a ballad. Really dozy, sleepy kind of ballad really there from uh, from uh, Bruce Springsteen. I, I didn't know it from, uh, from Bruce Springsteen. I found it out from Rage Against the Machine that had uh, an album called Renegades that came out in 2000 and they had different kinds of uh, cover songs. It was all cover songs. And the unbelievable thing about it is that uh, it never occurred to me that this was a cover. Um, the lyrics are just Rage Against the Machine. You, you know, you, I, would, I would bet my life it was, they actually wrote that song. And the music, they just took it and made it their own and it's unbelievable unbelievable now that's that's one uh, the other one is uh, now uh, it's uh, from the white stripes yes it's the white stripes and it's Jolene uh, that was a Dolly Parton song which is like country and western but they took it and again they gave it they, they put in their own soul in them uh, into that song and, and they just you know, they breathe life into it, and it's so um, so powerful that it, it's unbelievable. I mean, Dolly Parton, yeah, it's country western. You know, it's like you know, meowing a lot, and uh, but the the White Stripes one is really really good, and one that I hate is I I really really hate that is Downtown Train. Uh, now, it was originally it was a Tom Waits song and it was on uh, Rain Dogs, but um, Rod Stewart had the idea, or somebody from his uh, record company had the idea that he should cover it because he has his voice a little bit um, uh, gravelly, I guess, not as gravelly obviously as uh, uh, as Tom Waits. And yeah, and he made it into a pop hit, and um, yeah, that was terrible. So those are my answers. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, congratulations again for the 200 subscribers, and um, see you guys soon. Cheers.